Hello YouTube, Boyce is here and TFT set 4 is here. It's going to be there on Wednesday 16th and so I wanted to show you guys all the best comms that you should be playing in TFT set 4 patch 10.19. Now I will be presenting a lot because there is a lot of uh, comms and the set is new so I want to go over all the good comms. Some of them are just more consistent than others. Uh, some are chosen dependent, we'll talk about that later. Some of them have different variants, uh, we'll talk about that as well. I will be making guide on every single one of those uh, comps in the near uh, future on my channel. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's go over it. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this uh, content. Let me know if you have questions down below in the comments or you can ask also in my Discord and the link is down below. But here it goes. So, the first comp is Moonlight. Uh, Moonlight, I feel you're scary. Uh, so, this is uh, definitely tier S. Uh, tier S. Um, there's not that much to say really, it's just depending on what uh, unit you um, get with the uh, chosen Moonlight. Uh, and then you just go 3 star for both of your Moon Knights, so your Atheos becomes 4 stars, and then you just make him your carry. There is so many good items on him that it doesn't matter really which start you have, you should have at least half of a good component for a great item on him. Uh, so yeah, so this is the comp where you get Silas free star because you're going to hyper roll at uh, level five, level six uh, to get your two Moonlight star. This is the case where you just find all the Silas. Uh, so this will be your uh, final comp right here. A uh, pretty standard four hunters, free Moonlight. You have Mystic. You have Adapt. You have Brawler. All the good stuff. Your Aphelios is going to be dealing a ton of damage and killing basically everything once the Rage Blade gets going. Um, you then can definitely switch some positioning here and there, but your Fortune is always going to be Shen for the Taunt and Aurelia for the Disarm. Um, yeah, your second carry here can be either Warwick with tanky items or Ash with maybe something like a second Rage Blade or a Giant Slayer uh, that you can add here if you have it. Uh, Ash is a great, great carry, but um, the goal here is to make sure that the Aphelios is safe versus Assassins and anything. So put him in the corner here is the best. Uh, just make sure you upper roll these two at level 5, 6, and then you just add those units uh, as fast as you can to level 8. And uh, yeah, really, really consistent comp for uh, going top 4 and top 1. Now, this is the case if you get a Silas, but what about if you get Lysandras? Well, here it is. Again, you're going to see it's almost the same comp. The only thing is you have three hunters. Why? Because with the Lissandra, you have the two Dazzler synergy. Uh, two Dazzler is going to proc relatively easily just because you have a Morgana. Your Aphaeus is still going to be doing a lot of damage. Uh, you can still have an IE or even a Shojin really to have more turrets. It's also really, really good. Uh, it's super flexible, uh, Aphelos items. I do believe that those two are the best, uh, that you should aim for those two first. And then it's just whatever you get. It can be IE, it can be Giant Slayer, it can be Static Shiv, it can be Shojin. There is so many. So, uh, Deathblade, I mean, you name it. Um, so this is the version where you have Lissandra as the uh, chosen Moonlight or the one that you uh, free star first before. And then there is the Diana. Now for Diana, uh, it's basically the same as before with the Lissandra. You don't really want another assassin. You can add it if you can at level 9 I believe it is. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8. You can add an assassin on level 9 if you can. Uh, but otherwise, I would just, uh, you know, 
Aphelios is going to be dealing the most of the damage, right? The, you don't need more damage in this combo, especially if you get four hunters. Uh, your other damage is going to be Ash and Kindred. Uh, so you will have enough damage, you just need to protect your Aphelios. Same principle, you just 3 star those two, Aphelios becomes a 4 star, he deals a shitload of damage, you win the fight. Um, again, this is a high power build, right? Because you're looking for two 3 stars that are pretty cheap, 1 and 2 cost, uh, which is why I recommend rolling at level 5 and 6. Uh, after you did 3 star those two, you just straight up just go level 7 as fast as possible, go level 8, have an upgrade all those units and this is really really strong uh, so those are all the variations for moonlight uh, i will be going over more detail in uh upcoming video for this comp but if you do get the chosen moonlight you can definitely force this comp and do really good with it now second s tier comp that's being super consistent is six enlightened with chosen enlightened uh, this is like really really good because uh, first of all of all the good synergies are in this comp right you have adept you have dazzle mystic which is the, the kind of the trinity uh, of this set that if you do have those synergies you should be like really good to go um, dazzle will proc super easily with morgana and six and nine will cast much faster so everybody you know might be touched and the talent is just here to basically clean up what the morgana could not and he will cast super fast he will become invulnerable you will see him jumping a lot of times screening everybody and killing the whole team uh, but that's the principle of this uh, comp uh, you don't aim uh, at doing any freestyle or anything unless you're really ahead and you talent and Morgana freestyle at level 9 or 8. Uh, otherwise, I would just go fast 8, make sure you found those 3 units. Uh, and that's the way to go. I will be releasing a uh, guide on this comp as well. Uh, because it's really, really good. If you get chosen enlightened, definitely go for it. It doesn't matter which enlightened it is. Uh, you should definitely uh, aim for this comp. It's S tier. It should be top one. Uh, definitely top four, if not top one. And uh, by the way, you can even play it without even a chosen alignment. This uh, version right here is still really, really good. You can still have Shorten Morello on the Morgana, i.e. BT Guardian Angel, let's say. It can be QSS, it can be anything else on the Talon that we do the cleanup. And this is the same principle. The only thing is that you have four Enlightened instead of six. But uh, it's still going to be really, really good. And this does not depend on a specific Chosen. Um, now be careful because if somebody finds the uh, Latin Chosen you'll be contested and fighting these units and upgrading them at level 8 will be harder. Uh, but this is a version that you can go for if uh, you don't have a Chosen and you have Diadems for it, uh, then you should definitely go for it. A uh, really, really good comp. Now, let's talk about Erdewood. Uh, now, Erdewood, there is so many so many versions of it uh you can go six other wood three mages with vega nunu carry with four brothers there is so many different things that you can do uh this is just one of them where there is just a lot of good synergies going on with ash being your carry uh for ash i really recommend having rage blade as your main item then giant slayer than anything else that you can put on her uh really really good I put here set with Elderwood spell because it is actually broken, I think. Uh, Elderwood set is actually broken. It's so good uh, with his true damage after he sits up, he heals, he's doing true damage. With the Elder buff, it's actually insane. If you don't get this Patria, it's fine. You, it just becomes a Maokai and you're good to go. Uh, I really like this version because it relies more on your Ash. Uh, doing a lot of damage with Hunter and not being just buffed up with the air, the wood. You should have enough frontline anyways with all of these units uh, to protect your Ash. Uh, so yeah, really, really good comp. This is the last 
S tier comp for me. A really good top four. Uh, your top one condition is basically going to be H3, S02, something like that. A really, really good comp. And now we're going to talk about um, the tier A comps. And those are going to be chosen dependent. Uh, the first one being this one right here being nine cotist uh, nine cotist is really really strong if you can get it going um, so the goal is to basically have a cotist chosen and fast eight and then uh, try to find your zillion for the nine cotist synergy um, Depending on your uh, items, you can either go Jin Carry if you can get Sword and Gloves for, for the Infinity Edge and Last Whisper, or you can go with Kalista for a Rage Blade, or you can uh, more bows, basically more attack speed items. Uh, depending on that, you will want a uh, Lee Sin at level 9 to get Duelist. Or if you do get a gen, you do want a Shen for an additional frontline and giving Mystic to the whole comp. Uh, your Galio is going to be uh, doing a lot of damage. Uh, your carries here, you have the choice between the two depending on what diamonds you get. I would say recommend starting with uh, items for the gen because Jim will be a better carry in general than the Kalista. It will be doing more damage. Uh, so again, this is a fast 8 comp uh, where you can go 9 codes as fast as possible. You should be win streaking with this once the 9 codes comes in. Uh, then you just roll for Jin 2, Aatrox 2, Shen 2, etc. Uh, and then you can uh, add it to 9 and that is basically it. 9 codes, chosen codes. Uh, you should try to go for this comp. <clears throat> There is another version of it where you just go six cotist. Um This is it, basically. Uh, basic. I don't really. I. I mean, it's good, right? It's still tier A, but I would rather just go nine cotist if you have chosen cotist, right? Uh, this is really good just because you have adept and mystic. Yon is going to be uh, doing a ton of damage. You have legendary units, so that's why it's really strong. Uh, but if you do have a chosen codis, I would rather just go non codis uh, with uh, with it. But this is a comp that you can go for definitely if um, if you can if you find those units and you can to start them, please go for it. It's still really really strong. Do a list. So so this one is uh, I didn't think. Uh, I will make it 8 here to be honest. I do consider it S tier just because it does so much damage when it goes online and it's so like devastating in a late game once you do find the Yoni 2. Um, so the principle of this uh, is pretty uh, pretty easy actually. You just freestyle your SEO. Those are the items. That's it. Those are the items. You can put something else if you want, maybe like a BT for lifesteal, uh, maybe something like a IE. I would recommend Guardian Angel is a must. That that's 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 all you can I can say. Guardian Angel is a must. QSS is really good, uh, just because you can get CC'd to death basically. Uh, but you want to freestar him, so you're gonna hyper roll at the beginning for free star. Yes, yo. If you get the jacks, great. Not necessary, but if you get it, take it. Once you do get your SEO 3, you basically fast 8 to get this comp online as soon as possible, to get the 6 duelist as soon as possible. Uh, second carry uh, for this comp is going to be, of course, Kalista. Uh, best item on her is, of course, Renan, so she can proc multiple executes, basically. Uh, but Yasuo and Yoni are going to be your main carries. Uh, Really, really strong if you can get the Adams and the Yasuo do at least really early. You should definitely try to go for this comp. It's super strong in the early game. You're going to fall off a little bit in the mid game. And then once you do find the Yon, you're going to be popping off. It's 
really really strong if you get a chosen duelist please go for this comp warlords so warlords is two version of it uh if you can go nine warlords uh i haven't done worse than top two with nine warlords really really strong uh, the thing is, it depends on having a chosen warlord and a spat. But if you do get those, you I don't see how you can lose, basically, to how you cannot be top 4. It's so, so strong. Okay? Uh, you can definitely have a blue buff here. I do like the frozen heart as well, so it shows everybody that attack speed on the other side. Um... But Kalarina, basically, uh, you go level 8, you freestyle your Kalarina, you find your Azir, you're killing everything, your Kalarina is gonna kill everything, your Talon, if the Kalarina did not clean up, the Talon will. Uh, you're going to be super tanky with all of this. You have also the soldiers that I like to put here and here. Uh, you know, it's just really straightforward. You just play Warlords, basically. So strong, you fast 8. Uh, Focus on those items for Karina. Those are the best items by far. Uh, if you get the spatula. Uh, now I would like to talk about the other version where you don't get the spatula, but you get six warlords instead. You still have the chosen warlord, of course. Uh, this would be your uh, team with the blue buff right here. Uh, you can change the position. I can just put that really quickly, but. The Cassiopeia should be maybe here, even though it's a keeper. Uh, your Raven is going to be also doing a lot of damage because there is Dusk. Carolina is going to hurt even more with Warlord than Assassin. Uh, yeah, really consistent comp. Warlord chosen if you do have. If you don't have the spat, uh, then you should definitely try to aim for this. This is a lot of damage. There is a lot of cleanup that can be done with Talon and Raven. CC with Cassiopeia. Some shield of Janna. Uh, yeah, overall really strong. There is Mystic also. So, yeah. Really strong. And talking about Riven. Uh, Riven is also a fantastic carry uh, in the Dusk comp. Now, um, you don't need to have Dusk chosen uh, for this comp to work. But please, if you do... Uh, go 6 Dusk, okay? This is like a lot of damage. Riven is gonna kill anything in this path, including Supreme Galio. Okay, this is really, really strong. But you don't need the sh this Shorten specifically to make this comp work, which is to me completely insane. Uh, those are the units. There is not much to say. Once you find the Lydia, I will go over the vein. The cannon is for before the Azir. Uh, your Raven is frontline, you can give her Bramble Vest, Darwin Crow, Rabadon, it can also be Guardian Angel, Yonix Spark, it's totally fine. Basically any uh, 10 key items plus an AP damage item and she will just do all the work for you. Really, really strong. Um, yeah, that is in this comp you just go fast 8, you find uh, your units, those three, you especially try to find Raven as soon as possible because she will be your carry you put all this group together because you have keepers so everybody gets some shields um yeah there is not much to say really really strong you have mystic you have dazzler uh dusk is doing a lot of damage for everybody um yeah really strong comp and it's not chosen dependent so if you do get those tanky items and maybe a rabbit and star you should definitely consider consider this comp and the last one that I would like to mention is Six Sharpshooter. Now, um, I didn't play it a lot, but every time I played it, I top forward. Uh, so that means it should be good enough, right? Uh, basically, all the Sharpshooters, Chosen Sharpshooter, and Jin as your carry. And actually, your secondary carry is going to be Timo. Why? Because sharpshooter means it has ricochet and you can blind a lot of people. The faster you can blind people, the more time you give to the gen to clean up. It has also the zillion to make sure it survives. 
And also with this comp you have two vanguards, three Cortis, meaning you have another Gaio coming in the front line. Now it's three Cortis, it's not going to be Supreme Gaio tank, okay? But it's still an additional front line that you have uh, coming in the fight. Uh, really, really strong, it will kill people uh, pretty quickly. Uh, you just focus basically on Jin items and then anything that's tanky you put it on the Aatrox and any AP items you put it on the Timo. Uh, pretty simple, chosen, sharp shoulder dependent. But if you do get it, I would really recommend this comp. Uh, but that is it for this video guys, those are the best comps in my experience for set 4 patch 10.19. Let me know in the comments if you do have any questions about any of the comps. I will be making guides soon of all those uh, comps and I will be talking about it also in my discord. Uh, but yeah, those comps should uh, make you gain some LP on day 1 of set 4. I hope you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you do, and I will see you guys next time.